Hello to all of my simmers out there. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my very first Let's Play. I am very excited about this because I tried to do a Let's Play before. And to be honest, the shit had no direction. It had no guidance. It just... It was just a hot mess. So with this one, I actually have like a bit more of a story, a, a clear storyline in place and I've been playing around with it a little bit already and I really like it because I was starting to get bored with the sims and you know how that goes you know after you've explored all the expansion packs you were you know concerned about after you've played you know the game kind of every which way with mods without mods or whatever you know it could get a little dead but I finally found a storyline that has made me you know feel alive again playing the sims so let's just hop right into it um so the name of this series is called knowing nora okay and as you can see this is nora this is the main character to all of this um first of all the story takes place in bordeaux france i think i'm spelling i think i'm pronouncing that right Probably could be fucking it up. But anyway, we out here. We we done jumped off the porch with it now. So, yes. Bordeaux, France. If you Google it, it's a very beautiful, beautiful community. Like, it kind of reminds me of Windenburg a little bit. Because it has, like, those cottage-style, you know, old folky-ish, town homey ish kind of things. And I also have some great great um download builds from some simmers that i'll be including in here because i feel like without these lots the story would it wouldn't be the same so um yeah it takes place in bordeaux france and she wants to become you know this master chef it is her dream to, you know, have her own place of business, to have her own restaurant, bakery, um, ice cream, hell, something, pizzeria, just something with food that she can call her own. She loves food. She, everything that she does revolves around food. Like, it is her jam. It is her shit. Like, food is her thing. Um... Right now, she is a cook at a pub and grill. Um, you know, it pays the bills. So, you know, she's your typical young adult just trying to find her way through life and through love and career. And, you know, it's just trying to get this shit figured out. Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 30. So, if any of you know, you know, hey... Growing pains is real. <laughs> like, there is no clear-cut map to help you navigate through some of this shit. So, that's basically her life right now. It's just trying to get it all figured out. She's all about that bag right now. I know that might sound cliche or whatever, but whatever. She's all about her career right now. She's trying to get out of this pub and grill. She's trying to have her own establishment. You know, she's like, I, you know, this pub and grill is cool and everything. And don't get me wrong, like... The pub and grill on this list play is lit. Oh, it's lit because, you know, it's it's one of those places where you get frequenters. You know, the people that come in there come in there all the time. It's very close knit, very community driven, hold hands, cuss each other out, but can't nobody else come in the neighborhood and fuck with us type shit. But, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but she want to get her own stuff, you know? She wants to branch out on her own. Sis want her own shit, and there is nothing wrong with that, okay? So, yeah, that's basically her life. So, this is her dog, Cheddars, and Cheddars is a girl, which is funny. <laughs> but, you know, it, it really happened kind of by accident, and I just said, fuck it, we just gonna keep it. Like, that's life. It's unexpected, it's different, it's weird, it has quirks and shit. Boom. So, um... Yeah, right now she's walking Cheddars. We'll introduce you to the rest of the gang. But yes, a little backstory on her, though. She and her cousin, who is in the house with her, she's right here, Miss Quinn Nesbitt. Her and her cousin grew up with their grandmother in um, Birdo. You know, it, 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 they grew up a little rough. 
but you know not not too bad you know working class i wouldn't say too work, working class because what's interesting is the town homes that they live in is where they grew up it's just that they literally took took them and pretty much renovated them but yeah the townhouses where they currently live is where they grew up it's it's where their grandparents ra grandparents and parents raised them They've basically just taken it and renovated it. But anyway, her and her cousin, Quinn, grew up with their grandmother. And that's where Nora got her, you know, love of cooking. It's from her grandmother. Because, you know, money's tight. Ain't no going out to eat and going on these fancy restaurants and all that shit. You know, you're going to cook what you have at home. And you're going to make the best of it. And that's pretty much where she got her love of cooking from. Quinn, Quinn was pretty much, you know, Quinn was the fun-loving hippie, but the wild child at the same time. Like, she's a hippie. She cares about the environment. She cares about peace, love, inner growth, all of that stuff. She's the very zen chi, you know, let it float off your back. Don't carry it with you, cousin. But at the same time, she's with the shits, you know. Don't put her in a box, <laughs> basically, you know, Quinn, you, you, you can't box her in, you know, there's, there's no clear cut kind of direction as far as her personality goes, you know, you can get a little bit of everything when it comes to Quinn. So, yes, so right now she's walking the dog, Cheddars, everybody else is at work, um, when they get off, I'll introduce you to them. Um, basically, you have Quinn. Like I said, that's her cousin. She grew up with her. Um, then this is Kami. Kami is the best friend. So, Kami grew up, um, in the apartment next to Nora and Quinn. And they've basically been best friends in second grade. So the three of them became thick as thieves, but, you know, around high school, senior years, Quinn and Kami decided, okay, <laughs> this is a little deeper than friendship. This shit is feeling a little bit like love. So, you know, they've been together, and now they're married, they're newlyweds, so they're in that phase where, you know, the honeymoon phase is still there, but it's kind of wearing down, you know? The and they're really excited. Oh, she got to pee. It's, they're really starting to experience, you know, married life. It's it's really starting, the shit's really starting to sink in, basically. And then you have Darren. Let me take you over to Darren. Okay. All right, slow as hell. So this is Darren. Okay, he in his pajamas. So Darren is Nora's friend that she met in college. Nora is a college dropout. You know, shit happens. I told him a college dropout, and hey, always say go to see. I always say people that say, "Oh, it isn't for me." Go and see if it's for you first. I can respect that answer if you went and said, "Hey, you know, shit really wasn't for me." I can respect that versus you never have went, never have tried it, and saying it's not for you. Well, how the hell do you know? And to be honest, I won't even say that it wasn't for me. I was just lazy. Just flat out God honest truth. But everything happens for a reason. And I'm glad it happened the way it happened. Because my true calling is food. So it's like knowing Nora is... I, I can relate to this because, you know, you you plan your life out according to what you think it should be. Or what your parents want it to be. Or what you, you know, think people expect from you. And then eventually you say, you know, fuck that. Like, this is my life and I need to do what makes me happy what do i want to wake up and do every day for the rest of my damn life you know for being a forensic coroner sounds great and to be honest if i could do it as a hobby it would be fantastic but realistically i want to make food every damn day so it's pretty much the same thing so but she did go and she met darren and darren is one of those sweet kind men you know he he has a little bit of player ways to him, but he has always had a crush on Nora. 
but it's one of those deep friendships because it, it's one of those things where they don't even know kind of how they cross paths but they did and it's just been an instant click ever since like they they've talked about everything bonding from everything from goddamn anime to retro gore horror films and they have just been inseparable ever since so yes he has a crush on her he always has but he figures hey you know i would much rather keep things the way they are than to try to pursue a relationship and risk this fantastic fantastic friendship we've built um and he knows that Nora's just not in it in the business of settling down right now you know she has her her options as you know as far as romances are concerned and she's you know really not tripping off you know being anybody's girlfriend or having a boyfriend or just any of that she's trying to have her own business like she's she's at that point in life where she's tunnel vision you know so darren has kind of backed off of that even though he has always had a crush on her always has a sweet spot he's backed up and just kind of accepted his position as w w one of the best friends, you know, as one of the gang. Um, he has a girlfriend who you will meet later on. She is the owner of um, the pub and grill that Nora and Kami work at. Kami is the bartender there, Nora's the cook there. And yeah, she's, she's the owner of 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 where they work she's one of those she's a little bit of a snob you know because they she's used to growing up in money nobody really knows a whole lot about her family other than they kind of came into bordeaux out of nowhere and started just buying up all these local properties um so you know you you pretty much know they have money uh they know that her dad is not to be messed with and uh, but other than that, but other than the fact that they're that they money long and that her dad is, you know, basically this tycoon as far as buying out businesses and that he's not to be played with, they really don't really know a whole lot about that family. It's real hush hush. So it's going to be real fun to kind of unravel that. Well, that is his girlfriend. You know, she was one of those people where she's the boss and, you know, she's kind of oblivious she's one of those rich people that she says a lot of stupid and insensitive shit but she doesn't have any malicious intent behind it she's just really sheltered and oblivious to shit outside of her reality and her sheltered bubble that she's pretty much been in so she doesn't mean any harm it doesn't make the shit any less offensive and they do check her ass but they at least know it's not coming from a bad place or a malicious place. And the girl's just a, a ton of damn fun. Like, she's a party girl. She's not somebody, like, she's materialistic, don't get me wrong. But she's not so stuck up to where, you know, everything is beneath her. Like, no, she will drink you under the table. She'll, you know, do a kegger with you, all types of shit. So, yeah. Oh. But we'll meet her later. So right now we just got Darren. This is um, Tybalt. This is Kami and Quinn's dog. But of course, like I said, they all live in this townhouse, this um, <laughs> townhouse thing together. So, you know, they are constantly in and out of each other's apartments. So let me just give you this here I want you to see it in its entirety so this is like a Parisian you know townhouse and it has you know layers to it and I really like this build I like the little cafe that's off to it and they are in there drinking and shit often and a lot of times i just you know click hire a vendor and have somebody come or whatever to make it realistic but yeah so on the very top floor bring the walls cut away we have kami and quinn's um apartment and like i said this 
is where Kami and her mom and dad, this was their apartment when she grew up. Like I said, these are all of their childhood apartments. They just have renovated them over the years, you know. But this is where Kami and her parents grew up. So now you can see it's all renovated. You know, they got the bath, half bath here, kitchen, full bath, and then this extra bedroom. So this used to be Kami's room. So that used to be her room, and this used to be her parents' room. But like I said, they've renovated it. Things have been, you know, kept up because they've been in this building a long time. So, you know, between renovations that the building owners themselves have made, plus their own renovations, you know, they've done pretty all right. Um, this extra bedroom is like this for a reason. Kami, Quinn wants to adopt. Quinn wants a family. And even though Kami is like, we are a family. Like, even though it's just me and you, we are still a family, even without a kid. It's not that Kami is hell-bent against a child. It's just that she's at a point in life where she's just not quite ready for it. She still like, she feels like there's more living left to be done before they take that step. Whereas Quinn, she's like, look, who's to say we'll even live you know, another day. She, you know, like I said, she's very spiritual. She's like, you know, tomorrow is a promise. <laughs> so she uses that kind of narrative to be like, hey, you know, what are we going to be in our 40s and 50s trying to, you know, chase kids around? You know, we're already, you know, coming up on that 30. And it's like, they, she feels like even though they're not quite where they want to be all the way, you know, career-wise, Adopting a kid isn't too far-fetched out of the plans. So that's kind of their conflict. You know, Kami's not against it. She just doesn't feel, you know, not right now. Whereas Quinn is like, what better time than now? So that's kind of their backstory. And that's why that extra room is there. Because Quinn ain't playing around. She wants to adopt a child. Like, she's not joking. Okay, so then you go to the second floor. Oh, and Quinn is an environmentalist. I know I've said Kami's career. Quinn is an environmentalist. Kami is a bartender at the Pub and Grill. Okay, so now we are going into Darren's um, apartment. Now, Darren didn't grow up here because, like I said, Nora met him in college. But one of this apparently used to be the apartment of the maintenance man. And when he passed away, um, they she pretty much let Darren know, like, hey, you know, there's an open availability here. Like, we don't have to keep doing this, basically, this commute thing if you just move into, you know, the old maintenance man's apartment. So that's pretty much what he did. And that's kind of how he got introduced to Quinn and Kami. And now they're just all one big happy family. <laughs> Oh, I love it. So, um, he wants to be a musician. Right now, he's just a barista. That's kind of what pays the bills. And he does, like, some odd music jobs. But he wants to be, like, name in lights, famous, greatest musician of all time type dude. You know what I'm saying? So, that's his aspiration. That That's what he's working towards. He's very passionate about it. Like, he's that person who always has headphones on. Like, constantly. Like, you'll see throughout this Let's Play, Darren will have his headphones on a lot. So, as you can see, there's a lot of character in this apartment where you can see, like, it definitely used to be occupied by somebody elderly. You know, of course, there's been some updates, but you can see, for the most part, like, somebody old used to live here. Like, look at his damn wallpaper. But that's what I wanted. Like, this is the character that I wanted. And I feel like it's very realistic to the atmosphere that I'm trying to create, considering that this is taking place in, you know, Bordeaux, France. So I felt like it was perfect. Um, yeah, he has no pets, just a girlfriend, like I said, who was Lydia Dean, who was the owner of where Kami and Nora work. But yeah, this is his apartment, and that's how he ended up here in this complex. 
And then if you go down to the bottom, this is where Nora and Quinn grew up and their grandmother. So as you can see, things were pretty tight quartered. Like basically, you know, the grandmother um, pretty much stayed kind of in the living room and kind of did her thing in here and gave the girls the room, you know. So, you know, things are pretty, pretty tight around here, you know, pretty tight means. But, you know, as you can see, they've renovated it and turned it into something beautiful. And I think there's something great in that, in taking something that once was a symbol of like hardship. And once you've been able to live and make it through that and see past that, see it turned into something beautiful and just magnificent and something you could be proud of. So I feel like it's just such a I feel like it was a good idea to keep them where they originally grew up, just, you know, make it to where it's been renovated. Because I feel like that has so much character to it. And then they will eventually branch out. <laughs> just to give you guys a few spoilers, you know, eventually everybody will branch out on their own, but how and when? Mm, guess you'll have to <laughs> subscribe and like and stick around <laughs> to find out. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much, you know, everybody's apartment. Then you go over here. Like I said, this is the little cafe connected. They um, always grew up in this cafe. This has always been around. So this is a link up spot for them often. I mean, because damn, it's connected right to the damn building. I mean, you can't beat it. Wake up, take your ass downstairs, go get, you know, a fresh espresso, a scone or some shit. And, you know, call it a day. All right, so let's, there we go. So, sis gotta pee. Yeah, you need to, ooh. Yes, go pee, girlfriend. And they are good for going into each other's apartments and doing shit, which I don't have a problem with most of the time because that's the dynamic I want. It's for them to, you know, be so close to where they go in it. Like I said, Nora, Quinn, and Kami grew up in this damn um, complex. So, they are used to running up and down the stairs, going in and out of each other's shit, like, as if, you know, they live there. You'll catch them taking baths in each other's shit, cooking in each other's shit, all types of stuff. Like, that's that's just how things are gonna go. He's getting a phone call. Yes, he does want to hang out. Okay. So now, you're gonna see a little bit of Dean's life. So... I told you his girlfriend, Lydia Dean, um, her dad owns pretty much a lot of the local businesses in Bordeaux, just came out of nowhere buying up shit. So she is the owner of the pub and grill that Kami and Nora work at, which makes her the boss. But like I said, you know, she's not, she's not your typical stuck up rich girl. You know, she does have a lot of their ways, don't get me wrong, because there's just some obliviousness that comes with being sheltered all your damn life but like i said unlike most of the mean girl narratives they have for the rich girl she has no malicious intent she's really just slow as hell um so yeah whenever this decides to load but my god there we go so as you can see she has a nice little home let's just pause here so I wanted her to have a nice little French countryside manor. And look at that. And I Googled a lot of actual like French homes in Bordeaux just to, I wanted it to get it as close and as accurate as possible. But also without me having to build it. Because I think I've only done like two builds ever. And shout out to people that do builds. Y'all are fucking dope. I don't have the patience to just do what needs to be done with that so shout out to y'all like i said i've only done two builds i did um luann platter's house when i did a king of the hill let's play because you know i i'm a big king of the hill fan and i don't know if y'all remember she branched out on her own 
um in one episode now eventually she did move back but in my let's play i had it to where she didn't move back so that house she moved into that's pretty much where she stayed end up finding her husband she had two kids all types of shit so i built that house and then i built a science center for them to go to um when they go on vacation and that was it and i swear that shit just it, it stressed me out to no end so shout out to people that do builds but yeah this is her home and you know her her parent her family is often gone you know her um younger siblings are in boarding school her dad is you know her mom and dad who knows the business they're in as far as how they make their money they're constantly gone so it's pretty much just her and the butler here most of the times by herself so yeah so let's talk to her you know hey it's your girl you know and he's very caring give a pep talk Oh, maybe with Tosa. Oh, Rob, I'm just saying how her day was. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was about interest. <laughs> Do some romantic <laughs> shit, you know. So, yeah. Compliment appearance. Well, you look right. nice, babe. Oh, you look yeah. good. Bro, oh, you look at you bro. looking like yourself. Barosh. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Best undying love. Wamba boy, Sakwanario. Okay, it's funny because I do. Um, oh, at me on Origin. My gallery is uh, Deliboo underscore O nine D E L I B O O underscore O nine. Um, I do. I do a lot of creative sims. So don't be surprised if you see like people in the background and you're like, oh, that looks familiar from a show. I do a lot of um, creative sims casts from old shows and movies and shit like that is Grace from Will and Grace. <laughs> so, yeah, like I got proud family. I got living single, like pretty much just a wider range of different shows that I used to like watching growing up they'll be in here so yeah don't be surprised if you see like stew pickles or some shit like <laughs> it, 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 it'll get weird around here shit Arvini's also huh? blah and then i'm kind of a pervert it's like let's go home you know i know why you called me over here and it wasn't for the niceties like i, I know what type of time you want with this and it's like he loves her, but like I said, he also has always had a soft spot for Great Nora, <laughs> you know, and they've been establishing <laughs> this relationship, uh, but uh, hey, who's to say how's it gonna go, you know? Uh, okay, it's not uh, woohoo woo in the bush, woohoo in the bush then. And this is Too weird, like, <laughs> I'm already over your house. Uh, yes. mm. Like I said, Lydia is not your typical, like, rich girly girl. Like, she's with the shits. She's with them. Okay, I didn't know it was going to take this long to make Whoopi. Because he got to go to work soon, like, hey. Huh? 
Okay, so right now I'm just gonna cheat need and make him happy. I like to do that. You know, I like to send him to work on a clean slate. Look, now he can go to work. Go to work, satisfied, feeling good about himself. So, yeah. He's going to work. Now that some other people have come home, you'll be able to meet them. You'll be able to do that. Okay. So Darren is at work, and we're going to have him um, schmooze with celebrities. Okay. So now let's go to Kami. So there she is. Needs are looking pretty good. Girl, you need to take a shower. You know what you have a long day at work. Take a bath with some soaks. Do some rose petals. All right, now. Let's see what you down here doing. Watching cooking shows, per usual. What do you need for work? Okay, so you need level two of mixology. So this is what I like to do. Send their ass to a class. Like when they ain't doing shit and their needs are pretty much met. We could sit in on the class. You're off for two days. You know, ain't no reason for you to not come back and be damn near promoted when you go back to work. Like I said, she's all about that shmoney. She's trying to get that bag. She's trying to open up her own establishment. So we need some mixology. We're going to go take that class. We sure are. What do you need? Miss Bartender. Cause she, she now Kami, she loves what she does. She's not somebody that feels like, oh, this is just something I'm doing for the next step. Like she could work and, and be a bartender here forever and she makes a nice amount of money. I mean, because bartenders when you think about tips and if you really have a good clientele base. I mean, shit, you could make some real fucking bank being a goddamn bartender. So, you know, she doesn't see her job as, oh, just something for me to do for right now or anything like that. Like, no, honey, honey, she's proud of what she does. So, you know, let her... So... I believe in, you know, I feel like healthy relationships have a lot of sexual relations, so don't be surprised if my sims woohoo more than usual, because I feel like that's healthy in healthy relationships, and I feel like they have a healthy relationship. They may not always agree on everything, but for the most part, they have a healthy relationship. Okay. A break lent him. Coach him to Bobby. <laughs> like her, she could sit in on a class. Because she wants to be the best damn bartender around. So, guess what? They gotta have the skill for it. Shit, I might send everybody to a damn class. She needs to go to that class. What do you need for your career? Send your ass to a class, why don't you? Don't care about you being sleepy. Everybody's going to a class. <laughs> she needs logic, so guess what? We're going to go freaking get it. Say less.
no Debbie Gallagher like see Debbie Gallagher I did <laughs> I did a creator cast for um the shameless I did the whole shameless cast so but no Debbie we are out and about but that will you know be it for this first let's play I don't want to make it too long I just want it to be kind of an introductory to myself and to my very first let's play and the next one though will be lengthy like the next one will be meat and potatoes type shit because that's when we're gonna really hop into these life stories with everybody and kind of go into Kami and Quinn's dilemma on you know when are they gonna adopt this kid if they're gonna adopt this kid if so who are they gonna adopt then we're gonna go to Darren you know he's really falling in love with Lydia he never saw himself with a girl like Lydia you know the rich obnoxious you know stuck up type but here we are but you know what about Nora did that really just go away or are we just suppressing it? Because there's a difference between getting over something and just suppressing it. So, hey, which one is it? Did he, is he really over her or is he just suppressing it and something will bring it out? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Nora, what's going on with her love life? Is she going to come across some thou wow that make her, you know, sit on down or... Is she sticking true to her word? Not loving these hoes. Like, what is going to happen? You gotta subscribe and like and stay tuned in order to find out. I want to thank you all for stopping by and watching it. Please subscribe and like my page and add any commentary you'd like about what you want to see or maybe what you think is going to happen. All right. I'll catch y'all later. Bye-bye.